We open on a scene of the Demon Lord's defeat and at last, the world can have its peace once more. The hero in spandex and a lucha mask looks over the cliff triumphantly, knowing he has finally completed his goal, but now there is one more thing he needs to do. He looks over at the princess, and as their eyes lock, he goes begone thought and drop kicks her across the face. This turns out to be a game and our MC has been wanting to do that ever since he got the first find 1000 fragments across the map mission from her. She had it coming. In this world, VR technology has greatly improved, immersing people in games like never before. But with new graphic technology, there also comes the games that instead of actual gameplay or features, have fancy rain rendering. The games that have come to be known collectively as trash. But there are still those that are drawn to these dumpster fires of games and seek them out only to laugh at how garbage they are. Rakuro Hizutame is one such person with that kind of game addiction. Aside from that though, he is still your average second year high schooler and has to head into school after spending the entire night gaming. While he walks through the halls, we see this girl building up the courage to talk to him and she is finally ready to ask him to hang out. However, she gets her chance interrupted after Rekuro's friends come up to him and ask him about the game he was playing that night. After school, we see this woman Mana Iwamaki putting up a poster to bring in customers when the girl with a crush on Rakuro walks in and greets her. Mana can tell that she is looking for Rakuro, since he usually stops by here to pick up his latest trash game, but he isn't here right now. Last time she saw him, he had just picked up the Fairy of Chronicles and was planning to put everything he has got into beating it. The game is called Trash because Faria, who is supposed to be your AI assistant, is of no use at all, and the game has the difficulty of Dark Souls on steroids with bugs on par with Cyberpunk's first release. Just then, Rakuro walks in, and as soon as Rei sees him, she disappears into the back. Mana grates him and asks how Faria Chronicles went, and it was absolute trash, just like he expected. But the worst part by far was Faria herself. She would cause literally all the problems in the game, including murdering random villagers by accident. Then she would blame the whole thing on the demon lord even though it was all because of her. And worse yet, she is highly allergic to accountability. So if you even try to insinuate that she is at fault, she will get mad at you and stop you from progressing the game. Even Aqua was more useful than this. That would be enough to make almost anyone quit the game, but there was one thing that kept him going through it all. Once you actually defeat the demon lord, there is a brief 3 minute window where you are allowed to do whatever you want, and as we've already seen, Rakuro knew exactly what he wanted to do to Faria. Now that he's done with that mess, he has to see what he wants to play next, so Mana suggests he plays a game that is actually good this time. Shangri-La Frontier, but he's played so many trash games that he doesn't know what to expect from a good one. He logs in for the first time and sees a menu asking him to create his character, and he is amazed by such a simple feature, because he became so used to games that had no customization options. He takes a grip on himself and finally gets into creating his character. And this is what he ends up with. Rikuro's playstyle involves ignoring all armor in favor of the strongest weapon possible. After all, who needs armor, just don't get hit. However, as this is virtual reality and his face is still going to be displayed, he opts to wear this bird mask to hide his identity and preserve some of his dignity. He also selects his class as a wanderer because it comes with a sweet luck boost and loads up the game and finds himself in a wooded forest. He is amazed that he can actually move like he normally would in real life, and that the controls of the game are so realistic, as well as the surrounding area's design. He opens his map to find out where he is and locates the starting village quite a distance away. Normally, new players would spawn in the starting village, but since he selected the Wanderer class, he starts out in a random spot on the beginner map. He starts walking over to the village while also checking out his stats where he finds that his vitality is only at 3 due to his choice to not wear armor or clothes. As he walks, he notices something behind him and gets attacked by a goblin charging from a tree. He's able to dodge it in time and pulls out his blades to fight it, and as it swings at him, he sidesteps and one-shots it. The goblin drops its axe and gives Rakuro enough experience to level him up to level 2. He doesn't have much time to rest though as a killer bunny attacks him soon after. He dodges the bunny's attack and causes it to go flying into a tree, destroying it in the process. He can tell that one hit from that knife would be the end of him, so as the bunny attacks again, he blocks and counterattacks. However, the bunny is a bit tougher than the goblin and won't go down to one critical hit, so as it comes in for another strike, he parries it and stabs it again, finally killing it. The bunny gave him enough points to go from level 2 to level 4 instantly, and he also acquired a skill which gives him a bonus every time he blocks an attack. He also realizes that this entire time he has been playing, he hasn't come across any bugs in the code at all, so he can have as much fun as he wants, so he is going to keep hunting for those killer bunnies until they drop their knives since he thinks they are cool. 
Sometime later and after some major grinding, Rakuro has reached level 12 and has gotten two of those killer bunny knives. Those bunnies are pretty rare on their own, but he had to kill 50 of them to get these two knives. Considering he has gotten everything that he wanted from this area, he wants to move on to the second village, Secondale. But to do that, he must cross this bridge guarded by the area boss Snake. The game recommends a party of three take on the challenge, but with Rakuro's skill, he can handle this one alone. When Rei first heard that Rakuro would be playing Shangri-La Frontier, she decided to go to the starter village since all new players would usually head there first. She has apparently been playing the game for a while and is at a really high level, so the players in the first village are pretty scared of her. She searches through the people there looking for Rakuro's name since he always uses the same name for every game he plays, but when she doesn't see Rakuro's name there, she logs out thinking she must have just missed him in the crowd. Meanwhile, Rakuro is squaring up to fight the area boss to move on to the second village. He activates a skill that gives him a boost to his evasion so he can learn the attack patterns of the snake. The snake is meant to be a beginner boss, so its attack patterns are really simple to learn and it can easily be dodged. But when it comes to attacking, Rekuro's regular knives are not going to cut it because their durability is too low. So he decides this is as good a time as any to try out the killer bunny knives he got in the forest. As the snake strikes again, he leaps up into the air and prepares to attack once more. But he, in his overconfidence, he missed one part of the snake's attack pattern and gets sprayed with poison from the snake's tail. The poison causes one HP loss every 10 seconds, so he is now on a timer to defeat it before he dies to it. He needs to find a more reliable means to land critical hits on this thing, since it is still covered in scales and has great defense, so he comes up with the idea of creating a wound in the scales and then attacking the same spot repeatedly to get critical hits, but he doesn't know how much health this thing has or how much damage he is doing to it, so he is just shooting blind here. The snake smacks him upwards and heals its wound, making Rakuro realize that he had gotten cocky because of how good he was at all the terrible games that he has been playing. He had thought this game is just for casual gamers, so it should be easy. But as he falls into the snake's mouth, he refuses to give up and keeps himself from being eaten and counters with a stab to the eye which proves to be enough to defeat it. He has leveled up to level 14 from the victory, but realizes that he is still poisoned and doesn't have much time before he dies. He dumps all his newly acquired stat points into agility and stamina so that he can run to the next village and buy an antidote, but he doesn't know where the shop would be located, so he's just going to have to wing it. In the second village, there is a guy called Reiji who finally convinced his crush to start playing the game with him, and he is playing the role of the advice-giving veteran. They are going out to find her a pet in-game, but before they can go, they see Rakuro running straight towards them and Mai is freaked out by him. She thinks he is a bird monster on account of his mask, but Reiji recognizes that Rakuro is a player and must have gotten poisoned by the snake and is about to die. He advised him to go straight to the inn and get in a bed to set his respawn point there, which Rakuro is really thankful for. Maayi also found it really cool how Reiji knew exactly what to say to help that guy, so Reiji is also grateful to Rakuro for being his accidental wingman. Rakuro makes his way into the inn and gets a room after skipping all the dialogue from the clerk, he jumps into bed and saves his respawn point just before he dies to the poison. Later, Rakuro respawns in the second village and is walking through town looking for places to buy his essentials, but the people around him think he is a little weird for not putting on any kind of armor, so he goes to an armory to buy some light armor. After that, he heads to the weapon shop and tries selling the goblin axe, but it isn't worth anything, so he asks to see the weapons that the blacksmith has on sale. Nothing there is really any better than the knives he got from the bunnies, and the blacksmith explains that that is to be expected, since those knives are pretty rare or come across. If he wants anything better, then he would have to order one. Rakuro didn't know he could have the blacksmith make weapons for him, so the blacksmith confirms, adding that he would need to bring in the materials for it though. Rakuro heads out to find some of the materials required from the dire marsh wastes where ores can be mined. But he isn't getting lucky with his drops at all. The ore drops here are what he needs to get a weapon made, but in 30 minutes of mining, he was only able to get two gray ore while he needs five or six of them. Just then, a mud frog appears behind him, but isn't a hostile creature, so it won't be a problem to just leave it alone, but then the frog sprays mud on him and it just became personal. He tosses his pickaxe at the frog and knocks it over before making his way over to finish it off. Very, very slowly, he finally gets to the frog and kills it to let off some steam, and after that, it's back to mining for him. Over time, more and more players are going to need to get the ores from this place, and once that happens, there's going to be a lot of competition, so the best time to collect the ores is right now. After a lot of mining, he has finally gotten all the ores he needs and even finds one really special one which can be used for a rare set of daggers. The blacksmith tells him that he can come back with more ores later to raise the weapon's level to make it stronger. 
Rakuro appreciates the information and is impressed with how natural the NPC's dialogue is, but while he is still thinking to himself, the blacksmith tells him he should probably hurry home since it's getting dark, and to make sure not to leave the village at night because nocturnal monsters are incredibly powerful and aggressive. Rakuro listens to his advice and then does the exact opposite as he goes out at night to hunt some monsters. Meanwhile, Rei has checked the entirety of the beginner village for Rakuro and hasn't found him, so she concludes that he must have made his way to the second village after defeating the boss, all without ever going to the first village, which is basically impossible for any normal player. But for him, it is pretty reasonable. Rakuro is currently engaged in battle with a red-capped goblin that is unreasonably strong for a goblin. He is struggling to beat it because of its speed and smart fighting tactics, and to make it all worse, it then calls him back up to jump Rakuro and he doesn't know if he can make it out alive of this one. However, that's exactly the kind of high-stakes adrenaline rush that he loves and he is all in for the battle. But then he encounters something he could never have prepared for, a unique monster wolf. Elsewhere in the game, Rei has come across Reiji and Mai who saw Rakuro, when he first arrived at the second village. She has finally gotten a lead on where he might be, so she asks them where he went and what he looked like. Reiji explains that he came running into the second village after he got poisoned by the snake and was wearing no clothes and a bird mask on his head. With that information, she plans to continue her search, but before leaving, she gives them a teleporter as a token of her appreciation and speeds off. Mayi asks who the scary-looking night girl was, but he isn't sure. What he does know, however, is that the emblem on her back belongs to a guild that is focused on the unique monster, Lekagon, the Night Slayer. Unique monsters are special classes of monsters that exist within the game. Normal monsters respawn after a set amount of time, but there is only one unique monster each type in the world. They are called Colossi, and there are supposedly seven of them across the entire game world, and many of the top guilds have made their goal hunting down these unique monsters, but no one actually knows the conditions for getting one to spawn. So basically, they are extremely rare monsters, and are also ridiculously strong as well. This game has been running for over a year now, but even with a player base of over 30 million, not one player has actually managed to defeat one of them. That is the same unique monster that Rakuro is currently facing. He was already struggling with the goblins, but that thing blew them away in seconds, and now he has to face him. The wolf lunges at Rakuro, but he manages to pull off a perfect parry which allows the user to block all damage from a strike with the right timing. He gets flung backwards and laughs in the face of the monster, but internally, he is quaking in his boots because if he hadn't learnt perfect parry, he would have definitely been dead by now. The wolf attacks again and Rakuro realizes that he'll be dead if he is even a second late in his movements. He decides to go all in and activates all the useful skills he has got to deliver a critical hit to the monster's paw. It slashes him again, but he is able to dodge and deliver another critical hit. But then the moon fades behind the clouds and the wolf disappears. Rakuro is left confused as to where the wolf went, but then it appears behind him and tries to strike him again. The fight continues, and as the moon is covered again, the wolf disappears and sneak attacks Rakuro, but he is able to avoid the fatal blow once more. He has been fighting this wolf for over 5 minutes now and hasn't taken a single bit of damage the entire time, but the wolf's hide is so thick that he's not sure he is doing any damage even though he has landed over 200 critical hits. His weapon is also running out of durability, so if he doesn't find a weak spot on this thing soon, there's no way he can win. This fight is way out of his league as a beginner, but that is exactly how he likes his challenges, impossibly difficult and borderline psychotic. But this time, the challenge proves to be too much for Rakuro to handle and he finds himself on the ground, missing both legs and about to be killed. At this moment, he decided that he doesn't care about the game's main story or completing any other side quests, he is going to defeat Likagan at some day. That day may not be today, but he is definitely going to do it. And as Likagan delivers the final blow and kills him, he is given a new status effect, Likagan's Curse. He responds in the second village and finds his body now has red marks all over it. This is part of Lekagon's curse and no items can be equipped to the afflicted area, so he's thoroughly screwed since he now can't wear armor, even if he wanted to. And on top of that, the only way to get rid of the curse is to get a saint to do it, or to kill the one who placed the curse in the first place. He's now back to being viewed as a weirdo by all the other players, but he's got to stay calm and take the best course of action with the cards he has been dealt. With how many games he has played with bugs that put you in a serious disadvantage, he should be able to get through this. He first decides to allocate the stat points that he got from fighting Lickagon, but he can only really put them into stamina or agility, now since with no armor, upgrading HP would be pointless. He continues to agonize over his situation when a bunny suddenly drops out of the sky and lands on his head. It is a little too classy to be a killer bunny, so he thinks it must be some kind of game event. 
He chases it through the alleyway until it walks into a glowing door in the middle of a wall. The door reads, Unique Scenario, Invitation of Rabatuza. He had read about something like this being in the game before. With an expansion main story, Shangri-La also has several side missions, including unique scenarios which are said to give top-class skills and equipment, so there's no way he is going to pass it up now that he has encountered one. He enters the door, but what he failed to see is that the recommended level for taking on the scenario is 80, but his level is only 28. Rakuro walks into the Rabatuza and is greeted by the bunny, which he had followed in here. It praises him for his fight against Lickigan despite his low level and was greatly impressed by how well he dodged the attacks before finally being defeated. But though Rakuro didn't manage to do much damage to it, that was only because of Lekagan's overwhelming power. And even Lekagan acknowledged him as an opponent, which is why he placed a curse on him. The bunnies have been wanting to meet Rakuro ever since then, and that is why Emol was sent to go and fetch him by their boss. Rakuro asks if there is any chance that their boss is angry about the bunnies Rakuro killed, while trying to get the matching knives, but that has nothing to do with any of this. She takes him up to the palace where the boss is waiting for him, and since he is the first person to ever be brought here, he is quite excited to see what kind of reward he will be getting. But as he is brought into the room, what he sees is the most mafia looking bunny he's ever seen, Visage, and it makes him tense up a bit as Visage asks him to chat for a little bit. It's the middle of summer break and back at the video game store, Raid is still stalking the entrance in case Rakuro decides to stop by here if she can't find him in the game. Mana walks up to her and informs her that since it is summer break, he likely won't be coming back for a while and will be engrossed in playing Shangri-La. It's kind of odd she hasn't been able to find him at all in the game, but that's because he skipped the tutorial altogether and went straight to the second village. Mana finds it funny to hear what he did, but that sounds about right for something Rakuro would do. She wishes Ray luck in her quest to find Rakuro in the game, or alternatively, she could just ask him to play with her the next time she sees him IRL. But for her, directly talking to her crush is out of the question. At Rakuro's house, his little sister, Rumi, is heading out and telling him that she will be coming back late since she has work later. Meanwhile, Rakuro is busy reading up on everything there is to know about unique scenarios. The invitation to Rabatuza is a unique scenario triggered after defeating a monster of a higher level than yourself with the weapon acquired from a bunny. The wiki page says that once the event is triggered, a bunny will appear in the city around a player and run around before leading them to Rabatuza. Once in the rabbit city, the player will be tasked with defeating a giant snake that is plaguing them and upon doing so will learn the spell Enchant Vorpal. He encountered a Yakuza bunny that felt just as intimidating as Lekagan. This act told Rakura that he was very impressed by the fight he had with Lick again, and even more so with the Vorpal Spirit that he showed, but Rakura has no idea what Vorpal Spirit is meant to be. Vizash then continues that he would be happy to train Rakuro up to a point where he can handle Lick again, at which point he realizes that this must be a training quest, which could yield great buffs for him. So he has no reason to refuse and gets down on his knees saying, I place myself in your hands, brother. The last brother part caught Vizach's attention and gets him to stand up in all his terrifying presence. He starts walking over to Rakuro, making him think he might have been a little too familiar with him and said something wrong. But quite the contrary, Visaki likes that kind of response and tells Rakuro that he can call him Vash. He says he sees potential in Rakuro and puts him in the care of Imul, his daughter for now. She is really excited and wants to get right into showing him around the palace, but Rakuro tells her that he has been playing for a really long time now and wants to take a break for a little bit and also take some time to look up the whole unique scenario and unique monsters thing. Emil is disappointed but she tells Rakuro that she can show him to the inn they have in the palace so he can set his risp on point there and he is all for it. However, before Vash leaves, he remembers there was something he had to do and throws a collar into the air and around Rakuro's neck. The Vorpal Soul Collar has the effect of cutting the experience one gains in half but it also raises the stat number of stat points acquired by 2.5 times. He tries to take the collar off after realizing that the collar restricts his experience gain, but he is told that he is unable to take off the collar unless Vash allows it, and it is necessary to place restrictions to bring out the most growth. Rakuro isn't too happy about the new restriction on his experience points, but after thinking about it a little, the stat point increase is ridiculously advantageous, so it's not that bad. After checking all the online forums, he hasn't found anyone that knows about Vash or Emil, much less the Vorpal Soul Collar or the Rabatuza Palace. Meaning this is a unique scenario which he alone knows about, and that makes him happy. He looks at the time and realizes that he has an appointment in another game with a friend of his called Katzo. He has to go meet him in Berserk Online, which he hasn't played in a long time. 
The game is obviously a trash game, and over the years, its player base has reduced to only 100 logins a day, leading many to wonder why they are still keeping the service going. With such a small player base, everyone who is still playing the game knows each other as they are all fellow trash game enthusiasts. Now that Rakuro has logged in and met Katso, they get down to business and begin their fight. There is only one rule in place, there are no rules, so Katso starts off with a tentacle arm glitched attack that he discovered while Rakuro was playing Feria Chronicles. Though this neither impresses nor phases him as he uses his own glitched attack and instant punch glitch. With this attack, he can block any attack as long as his EP stays above 12. Even an insta-kill wouldn't be able to get through his barrage of fists. As they continue to fight, the other players recognize Katso and Rakuro and all go over to watch since this is a matchup with the top-tier players of the bug-out game. Rakuro finally manages to break through Katso's defense and cuts one of his hands off. But thanks for another glitch, the dismembered hand is still able to move and punches Rakuro, knocking him out and winning the game for Katso. Even though he lost, Rakuro is still glad to get the change of pace and fight another person rather than only NPCs. Hearing Rakuro say that he has been fighting NPCs, he realizes that he was being serious when he emailed him to say he was going to start playing Shangri-La. But he never thought he would see the day where Rakuro would play a game that was actually good. Rakuro tells him to listen first. There are these monsters in Shangri-La called the Seven Colossi that are ridiculously strong, and they are so rare that across the entire player base, they only know the names of four of them. And since the game launched a year ago, not a single person has actually managed to defeat one of these monsters in a fight and Rakuro got killed by one of them recently. So he has decided that he won't stop playing the game until he has defeated Lick again. Hearing Rakuro talk about Shangri-La so enthusiastically, Katsu decides that he will start playing as well. He also messages someone else they know to tell her that Rakuro is playing Shangri-La. This person, Arthur Pencilgon, receives the message while in the middle of combat with several players and she's also shocked that Rakuro would play a game that isn't trash. But as she finishes off the rest of the players around her, she talks about how she is going to have to find him in the game and I assume that means she wants to fight him because she is clearly not against killing other players. Meanwhile, Rakuro logs back into Shangri-La and returns to the second village. He returned here with Emil through a teleport gate, which she can use anytime she wants, but she asks him why he wanted to come back here so soon when there is a bunch of interesting stuff he can do in the Rabatuza Palace. He tells her he is definitely interested in taking a tour of the palace, but there was something he had to do here first. There have been a lot of new players in the game since summer break started, and due to this, the starter village is completely packed with them. So he wants to get to the third village before he takes on the Rabatuza unique scenario is once the players start pouring in here. The village is going to get crowded and resources are going to become scarce as people fight over them. She didn't understand a single word of what he just said, but she's happy to go along with whatever he wants to do, so if he wants to get to the third village, she will gladly help him get there. After saying that, she sends him a party request, surprising Rakuro because he wasn't aware that he could have NPCs in his party. Imul says it's only natural since he can't get back into Rabatuza without her, but he just thought she would follow him around until he wanted to go back. He accepts the request and has Emil climb in his shoulder so they can get going. But then two girls walk past him and notice Emil, thinking she is cute and ask him how he managed to get a Vorpal bunny as a pet. Since this is part of a unique scenario that only he knows about, he would like to keep it to himself until he has finished clearing it. So he takes off running without answering any of their questions. But before he can get out of sight, one of the girls takes a picture of him and Emil, so they can ask the forums about it later. They make it to the wastelands and Emil asks what he came all the way out here for. Rakuro tells her that he had something he wanted to check related to his curse. It says monsters of lower levels will flee from him, so he puts it to the test as a monster charges at him. Once the monster spots the curse marks on him, it turns around and starts running for its life, so Rakuro chases it down into a wall, and as it turns to the left, he blocks its path and kills it with the extra momentum from his chase. Emil compliments him on his ferocity, while hunting down a monster that was trying to flee from him, so he takes it as a compliment and tells her that now he has confirmed that low-level monsters won't attack him, they are going straight to the area boss and will just ignore the monsters along the way. While they head over to the area boss, Rakuro realizes that he forgot to get any information about the boss before heading out to kill it, so he asks Imul if she knows anything about it. She tells him that it's a monster called Mud Digger and comes out of the ground to attack you, so it is very important to find a way to keep it in place if planned to defeat it. Once they get there, Rakuro finds that the battleground is a swamp as far as the eye can see. Mud Digger emerges from the ground and Rakuro realizes that he is in the worst possible case scenario for his build. Because of not being able to wear armor, he put all his stats into his speed, but a swamp forces a player into a walking state, meaning you won't be able to use any of his speed here at all. 
This was the end of episode 4. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to not miss the next part.